Graham Linehan is the creator of a genuinely beloved sitcom, Father Ted, and of the It crowd, as in IT, information technology. Uh, but Graham himself was a member in good standing of the actual It crowd, writing for Harry Enfield and Steve Coogan, appearing on screen in Little Britain and Alan Partridge. He's won a ton of BAFTAs uh, and I think at least one Emmy. Uh, he was widely admired by other comedy writers for eschewing the easy laugh, the reliance on cheap profanity, etc., which may be how he came to put a transgender subplot into an episode of one of his shows. That wasn't a big deal a decade and a half back, but it became one retrospectively culminating in Channel 4, removing the episode from repeat broadcasts from the box set DVDs and from streaming services. And next thing you know, a comedy writer, an otherwise uh, conventional man of the left, had morphed into a transphobe banned for life from Twitter. Or as one trans activist put it, Graham Linehan had turned into Katie Hopkins, uh, which is one transition uh, I'd be interested to see. I don't think it was meant as a joke, but in our humorless age, we must find jests where we can. Graham has uh, survived all that just about, and he joins me now. Graham, it's uh, great to see you. Let me let me ask you this uh, first of all, because uh, I read years. I think I first read it when I was a teenager. Milan Kundera's great novel. Uh, the joke about uh, Czechoslovakia in the early years of communism. And basically, he makes the wrong joke and his life is ended uh, effectively. Do you think we're moving incredibly? Do you think the English speaking world is actually moving into a world with no jokes, just attitude striking? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, yeah, it kind of seems to be going that way. Not not necessarily because of, like, obviously, there's, there's a generalized, there has been up until this point, a generalized movement for progressivism that was, that made things, that it appeared as if things were getting better and better in terms of things like gay marriage and abortion rights in Ireland and, and stuff like this. But what's happened recently is that the the doctrine uh, of, of trans women or women which is which is a kind of a contradictory statement because really what it's saying is that men are women. Uh, that has kind of mm. ensured that people can't do their jobs at every level of society, from safeguarding and girl guiding to politicians advocating for women's rights, like like Stella Creasy's ridiculous display the other day on Mum's Net. Um, no one can actually do their jobs, and comedy is one of those things. I agree completely, and it's funny you mentioned the. Um, the Milan Kundera thing. I've been thinking about him a lot recently. One of the things that happened in Czechoslovakia uh, after what was it called, the Prague Spring, um, was that you know yeah. uh, people, uh, very capable people who were in various different jobs would would, would like surgeons. In the case of Milan Kundera's book, uh, um, the unbearable lightness of being, you know, were 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 employed as window cleaners, and this is kind of an early version of cancel culture. And the idea that cancel culture doesn't exist, which is which is being promoted by people like Owen Jones and Stuart Lee, it's one of the most dishonest uh, stances I've ever seen, you know, because you only have to look at what happened to Rosie Kay, what happened to Helen Watts of Girl Guiding, what happened to Rachel Mead, what happened to Jessica Walls, what happened to Bertie Rose. All of these stories are stories of people who 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 refuse to go along with a sexist and homophobic ideology that presents, that, that suggests that it is feminine performance that makes a, a woman rather than her, her biological reality. Um, uh, you know, the, 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 these, these things have, have led to a kind of upside down reality where you have all the people who beforehand, I would have been well behind, people like Billy Bragg, Stuart Lee, uh, John Ronson, and they're all advocating for um, this extraordinary homophobic, misogynistic ideology that's already placed women in men's, men in women's sports, men in women's shelters. I mean, it's just extraordinary. And I've had to give up. I mean, I put my career to one side because I think it's so serious and so damaging to women. 
Well, let me ask you about that, because that you have put your career to it. Instead of writing sitcoms, you're writing a Substack uh, column now. You, you described yourself... I don't think I was wrong when I said you were a, a fairly conventional uh, man of the left. Um, how, how have these people who purport, purport to be iconoclastic figures... Uh, left-wing comedians, whether we're talking about London or Dublin or wherever, uh, have, have, have there been any who've been supportive of you, or, or do you feel that they've just all fallen into line? A few people have supported me behind the scenes. I've had some nice uh, lunches and dinners and phone calls from people. Uh, I think it's okay for me to say Jonathan Ross has been incredibly supportive, probably the only person who's been pub publicly supportive. Um, but other, others uh, either remain quiet or, uh, you know, I mean, I've been fighting this now for five years. As soon as I started talking about women's rights, I was called a bigot. The first thing I did when I came into this subject was I was complaining about the use of the word turf, which was being used as a word, yeah. was, which was being used really to tag women as acceptable targets for violence. That's what the word turf did. And I objected to this. And my cancellation was instantaneous after that. The, the uh, IT crowd episode was just used as, as an excuse. You know, the real problem with me is that I'm doing the same thing that J.K. Rowling is doing, same thing that Rosie Duffield is doing, the same thing that people like Stella Creasy refuse to do, which is standing up for women, saying they re they're real, they don't just exist as an idea in men's heads. Um, and, you know, uh, pointing out that the implications from this ideology, you know, it's going to result in dead women. It, it, you know, like today, I'm just about to post mm -hmm. now, a guy said something like uh, the idea of a trans um, person identifying a trans predator uh, uh, using a, a trans status to get close to women is implausible, he said. This is a guy who works in some uh, Edinburgh University or something in a pretty in a pretty significant role, and like we had because we've been working on it for a while, a list of about sixty uh, men who use trans their trans status to abuse, attack women and children. So many of them attack children, in fact, that I would say it comprises about seventy percent of the list. So the people, and again, sorry for using these same names, because but I really want to try and call them out because. Mm. Because they, they use Twitter and they use various techniques to avoid scrutiny and avoid engagement on this debate. But I think those people are complicit. Someone like Stella Creasy, who pretends she doesn't know what a woman is, mm -hmm. because it's fashionable to pretend that, is putting women and children at da in danger. And my worry is, considering this has happened over and over again, all over the world, there are recent cases in America, Wee Spa, Loudoun County, cases wherever you look. Mm. Um, but my worry is it's going to take some, some, take something truly shocking, truly awful, before people start to realise that it's more important to do the right thing than to appear to be doing the right thing. Uh, sorry, you, Mark, and in just, this case, the quickly, right thing... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, just, just quickly, because we're almost out of time, Grant, but do you regret that you cannot tackle this subject as an imaginative writer. It's a great issue. You know, you could write a novel about it, like Harriet Beecher Stowe did, about slavery or whatever. But if you took it to a publisher today, the publishers are all woke. Uh, the commissioning editors at Channel 4 and the BBC are all woke. Nobody would, uh, nobody would take a, 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 an imaginative oh, uh, treatment of the subject, would they? Yeah, I, I don't even bother trying. I know a woman who wrote a very moving piece about a young, two young friends who um, going through transition, one who changes her mind, and uh, she handed it in to her agent and her agent dropped her, you know? So this yeah. is the co what we're up against. Yeah. We're up against cultists in every media company who are kind of imposing the party line, you know? And the party line in this case yeah. is, is, is a really dangerous one, you know? I mean... It, it, no, I, no, you're, I, I still. Sorry, you're right. You're right. You're right about uh, that, Graham. And a lot of these publishers, 
They're, they're, you know, even if they're not, they're cowards because they're scared of their woke interns who'll demand the book be pulped and all the rest of it. Uh, we are all out of time. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you, Graham. But never fear, because okay. the one and only Alice the Stewart is waiting in the wings, raring to take the stage. Have a spiffy weekend. Keep it on GB News. Stay safe. Stay free.